well, Leona, thank you very much for inviting me here. Uh, it's a pleasure to well, participate in this long series of uh, well, experts that have been uh, joining you in different, uh, in different topics. And uh, today, I guess we're going to discuss in something that I guess you have touched before briefly. Uh, but we are going to talk about uh, fine wine as, uh, as an investment, pretty much. So something, something a bit unusual, something that a lot of people still uh, don't know, that they heard about it perhaps, but they, uh, they really they try to reveal basically a bit more information through this, uh, uh, this session, this presentation. And uh, I'll try to answer all of your, uh, all of your questions later on. So what I will do, I will start to share my screen so we can go quickly through the presentation. Is that okay? And, uh, here we are. So uh, basically, I'm going to introduce briefly myself. I'm a CEO and director of uh, Oeno Future, Oeno Group now. Um, basically, is uh, um, what you see in the picture is me. Behind me is my vineyard. I'm a winemaker by education. I, degree, I have a degree in enology of viticulture. I studied between Italy and Spain. I did all the sommelier courses with Italian Sommelier Association, including a master in sommelierie. Um, working my way on the master of wine is going to take a bit of time in terms of that course. It's quite challenging, as uh, many of you know. I finished all the courses with the Wine and Spirit. I did the diploma, it seems a lifetime ago now, because I finished it in 2012. Well, perhaps some of you is studying that. It's quite, a, it's quite an intriguing experience. So in terms of my working experience, as for my education, I did a bit of everything. I worked with uh, Gianfranco Soldera in Casa Basso, who was uh, an amazing producer of uh, Brunello di Montalcino. Now he doesn't produce anymore. Brunello is just... Uh, 100% Sancho Bese in Toscany, one of the greatest winemakers in, uh, in Italy, where I learned and witnessed how to produce fine wine, basically. So um, I kind of discovered literally from the production, from how to manage a vineyard, how to make a great, great wine. Then uh, I moved to international sale. I was exporting wine for an Italian exporting company. Work as a sommelier in a Michelin star restaurant here in London, uh, in Akasan. Maybe some of you is familiar with, uh, with the group. And uh, finally, as a wine buyer, just before setting up uh, Wayne of Future, our company, which I've uh, set up uh, basically five years ago last week. So we have been, uh, we're, we are still young, but we've been around a bit, I would say. So uh, you have a bit more information about myself, and now let's jump on, uh, let's jump on the program quickly. We're going to discuss about fine wine as an investment. So a bit of an unusual perspective for fine wine, a bit more financial, let's say. A bit less romantic, I understand that point, but it's, uh, still a lot of people are taking advantage of this incredible asset to, uh, to, make, uh, to make some money and we'll see uh, why it is, uh, it is useful. What does it mean to become an investor first? The fine wine market, why investing in fine wine? And then we're going to see some, uh, some example basically in, uh, during our presentation, some of the approach that we use with our client that to be, uh, just to be a bit more explicative and to to show you a bit more how everything works on the practical side. So uh, I will uh, dive right in, let's say, starting to uh, define basically what does it mean to become a wine investor. Many people still don't know, it's still kind of uh, uh, ambiguous, it's still not very clear what does it mean to become a wine investor, but I think you can take a guess from the picture uh, that you can see on the screen, it actually means to become pretty much a collector. So it means to buy cases, as you can see from the picture, it's a picture taken in a bonded, uh, bonded warehouse, it means to become a collector, um, a custodian, let's say, of uh, cases of wine that will mature over time and uh, uh, will improve in quality, will become ready to drink, because I'm sure a lot of you knows that certain wine, when you enter the market, is definitely not meant for consumption immediately. Imagine the great wine from, uh, from Bordeaux, for instance. And uh, basically, investing, what does it mean? It means just to buy the wine, pretty much. We'll see if it's young, when it's young, or maybe when it is in the market. Keep it for a number of years till uh, it will increase in value. And basically, it uh, will give a financial return. Normally, I would say the 
uh, wine is a very delicate product, is especially for when you talk about the long maturation period. You need to be extremely cautious on the uh, con of the quality of your storage. So in that sense, that's why we mainly suggest to work in a bonded warehouse, which is pretty much tax-free because you don't pay duties and VAT until you take the wine uh, out of bond, actually. So when you uh, when you are ready for consumption, when you are ready to sell it, perhaps or the restaurant is ready to receive it in the restaurant itself, in the venue itself, then is when you pay the VAT and the VAT. So it's a good way of saving it, but it's a good way of having access to an international market as well. Because being in a bonded warehouse, basically it never really land in the UK soil. I mean, bonded warehouse is based in the UK, but still you don't pay the UK duties and VAT, which means I can decide to liquidate perhaps in Asia, perhaps in the US. So I can transport the wine and um, in the meantime, what I do is I give a certain um, a certain guarantee, a certain uh, quality assurance to my future buyer that the condition of the storage were uh, pretty much uh, perfect. So. Um, this wine, this asset basically is becoming more and more popular and we've seen also from Knight Frank, the luxury, the luxury report, basically on alternative asset, the wine has grown for around 120% in the last decade. So pretty phenomenal performance and as I was saying, a lot of people are taking a look at less the romantic aspect of this, uh, this phenomenal product and they're actually taking advantage on the financial side. But one thing is really important. I mean, when we are talking about uh, fine, uh, fine wine for investment, we are only talking about the 1% of the global production, even less actually than the, the 1%. This is extremely, extremely important because uh, we're going to touch base later on on the current situation with the coronavirus and the impact that this global pandemic had on the wine market was huge. In terms of fine wine as an investment, it was way smaller. So in this sense, it is important to identify which are the wine for investment. The great wine for Bordeaux, for instance, the great top Italian wine. So those wine that you actually, um, maybe you have heard their names in the, um, in the uh, auction catalog or you see on the magazine, the Romane Conti, the Chateau la tour la fit and so on these are the wine for investment not every single one of them so there are wines that are made for maturation but not all of them is a great investment so we're going to see later on some of the important parameters to make a great wine for investment and we're going to see now some characteristic from a more uh, i would say again a financial uh, aspect so why people are investing in fine wine basically what is uh, what is the, the reason behind it? Um, I will resume it basically in uh, three, uh, three main reasons that I normally explain to my investors when, uh, when they jump on board and when they start to educate themselves on this particular asset. And uh, one, of the, one of the main reasons, one of the most attractive reasons for investing in fine wine is the annual growth. We're talking about an average of a 10%, so 8 to 12 and uh, this percentage that we see is pretty much constant over a year. What it changed though, it changed depending on the wine. Some wine they perform immediately if they have a short term kind of strategy for the investment, other wine they take a bit more time. Beautiful thing is that some wine actually perform even more. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with uh, Sassicaia 2015, nominated by Wine Spectator Best Wine in the World very recently, and uh, phenomenal performance. So we had, uh, we can see this chart is taken from Livex, which is kind of the uh, stock market for, uh, for wine, where we can see the performance, the track record, and uh, where we can see actually this wine showing a massive and constant increase. So, we can see that basically we have a great performance, but on average, let's say very conservatively, conservatively I would say a 10% is pretty positive return compared to many traditional financial assets. So another great benefit in terms of uh, why to invest in wine is definitely the control. You have to think about it from a less wine perspective and more from a financial perspective. The very intriguing part is one is a tangible asset. I can uh, have a bottle, I can touch it, I can even drink it. It's so tangible that I can pretty much decide to do whatever I want. The only thing is make sure that the person that you're buying the collection, you'll find wine from, gives you the title of ownership. So you need to be the, con uh, you need to be the owner, the full owner of the asset. They can be the custodian for you, but you need to be able to liquidate, you need to be able to drink it if you want. 
the wine is yours. This is a recommendation that I do to all my investors when they jump on board, either with me or either with any other company. So make sure you really take the benefit of uh, having the control. Because what you do, one of the reasons why wine is considered a safe haven is also because you can decide to do whatever you want. It's not tied up in the bank. It's not tied up with the financial institution. You can liquidate at any time. Beautiful thing when we are talking about the less of 1%, it's a very iconic wine. This wine, pass me, pass me the joke, the wine is liquid. So, which means when we put it in the market, we are able to actually liquidate and to sell it and to cash back my, uh, my investment in a very reasonable amount of time. So this is a very important financial benefit. And I know for, uh, for many of you, maybe it's uh, from a wine perspective, my background is, um, is definitely wine. It can be a bit uh, not easy to understand, but from an investment point of view, believe me, it's almost like the cash that you keep at home in order, um, in kind of rainy day funds, let's say. Something happened, you need some cash, you still have it. In this case, you have the wine that is outside of the um, traditional, uh, traditional market. You can liquidate and you can decide to do whatever you want in a reasonable amount of time, which is extremely beneficial. I say it is a safe haven. It's a safe haven because of a safety, uh, most of all. Uh, we see even during this, uh, this event, Wine is not linked to uh, other asset, and when I mean wine, I mean fine wine for investment. As I said before, the market with the lockdown and the closure of the restaurant suffered a massive hit. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of from the wineries, they were not able to sell the wine in the market directly to distributor, to retailer, and so on. But in uh, in this case, it's pretty interesting to see the performance of, as you can see here, some of the uh, some of the uh, fine wine, again, it's taken from Livex compared to the Standard & Poor 500. You can see the massive drop that the Standard & Poor index did compared to the other asset, to the other fine wine. And uh, one is a Italian uh, 100, so the index were represented Italian wine. And the other one is basically 1,000, uh, Livex fine wine 1,000, which takes some of the most iconic wine for investment from all over the world. In this case, you can see the performance is quite solid, it's quite stable. And in terms of capital protection, which in this particular situation is extremely important for investor, is a massive benefit. So in, uh, in this case, extremely important to uh, consider this. Another, um, why is the reason? It's controlled by supply and demand. So we say, we mentioned before, the supply is very, very limited, the demand is very high. So in this case, we still have consumption. Another important, uh, another important benefit that I'm just going to mention because it depends where you are based. In many countries, you have a tax benefit, which is, uh, which means tax is kind of uh, um, capital gain exempt. So you don't pay the capital gain tax on uh, your profit, which is a pretty interesting, uh, pretty interesting scenario for uh, for some of the investors that want to take advantage of all the benefits. Let's see why investing in uh, in fine wine, in some from a more practical point of view. Basically, what you need to do, what you need to make sure in order to really um, be in a safe in a safe position, is uh, uh, to receive a tailor-made offer. This is extremely important because not all the wine perform over the same uh, over the same period. Uh, behind Viona, you probably notice a bottle of uh, Tignanello or a bottle of uh, or a bottle of Senia that we were just discussing discussing earlier on. Wine that has kind of a, um, a quicker, let's say, um, investment strategy compared to other wine. If you think about it, nobody will think about drinking a 2015 Chateau Lafitte. Well, on the contrary, you can appreciate the Spanish wine, perhaps, or some California wine of the same vintage. So in this case, it's important to have a tailor-made selection. Make sure that the wine is bought directly and uh, is not uh, has not traveled all over the world. It's not being kept in unsure condition, let's say, because it's extremely important. Make sure you have a person that you can always reach out to, that can guide you through your investment, they can answer your question, and they, and is able to liquidate the wine when you need. It. You never know; you might need the money. Make sure you have access to the people. <clears throat> Make sure you receive report. It can be annual report or even more. And uh, uh, you receive a um, list of wine from, uh, from your client. 
ideally, it's better if it's a fully managed, uh, fully managed investor. So somebody that can take all the hustle, all the uh, complicated mechanics behind it. They can tell you when to liquidate the product, when to jump in, when there are good, good opportunity. And if you can, make sure that you have a commission on the profit and on, on the uh, overall portfolio when you liquidate. So um, this is extremely important but because otherwise if you ended up paying perhaps the 10% up front when you can pay the 10% of the profit. Massive difference compared to your investment strategy. In one case you pay 1% when you liquidate and in the other case you pay the 10% which means you lost pretty much the, uh, the growth of one year. Possibility to store in a bond warehouse and uh, the wine need to be transferred into your account, your account or an account where you have direct access to. Uh, let's make sure this is very important. Let's not die the elephant in the room. There have been scandal, there have been companies that unscrupulously they were uh, pretending to sell the wine, but then they were not delivering the product. So make sure test your uh, test your company you're dealing with. Tell them I want to receive the wine. How does it work? Can you do it? Can you send it to me? So extremely important and make sure, again, we are talking about a very delicate product, a very delicate asset, make sure it's insured, especially at market price, because otherwise after 10 years they drop a case, it will be a complicated moment. So let's take a look. Uh, Leona, let me know in case if I'm going too fast or if I'm uh, going all right. Um, I want to, perfect. I want to just go through a bit more the investment opportunity. So a bit of the portfolio size that we do for, uh, for our client. We've been, uh, we've been in the game for, uh, for quite a while at the moment and uh, we've seen more or less, we can regroup more or less some of the investor and you know, guide you through a bit the characteristic of their portfolio. So we'll start with the um, initial portfolio. It can be 10,000, I put uh, euro, it can be pound, it can be dollar, more or less, just to give you a kind of an indication. This portfolio, we run through very quickly here and down, uh, we have uh, the breakdown later on, it can be a 25. These are all flexible. I mean, this is just a guideline. You can invest 12, 15, or it can be a 20, but more or less the, uh, these are kind of the brackets, basically, where you can see the difference from one portfolio to the other. So let's say 10, 25, 50, and above 50, and let's say above 100,000. So in this case, you have different characteristics for each kind of level of investment. Investment becoming more complicated and more diversified uh, the more we invest, basically. So the idea is, in terms of that, I follow quite a bit, despite my um, very wine, uh, wine, uh, um, wine-focused background. I focus very much in the idea and the guideline of Warren Buffett. So in his uh, in his mind, it's very important to. Uh, spread the risk, optimize the performance, but one thing that is paramount as well is not to spread too much. So in this case, if you see on the on the chart on the bottom, you see that the breakdown of the portfolio, it can be geographic as well, so different location, it can be part of Bordeaux, part of Burgundy, part of Italian, part of California, but it's very important to have it in different investment, uh, investment strategy, short, medium, and kind of diverse, I'd, uh, I'll repeat the medium term because it's a different geographic provenance. What I want to say with this is don't spread it too much. If you have only 5,000, if you have only 10,000 uh, pound or euro or dollar again to invest, don't just put a very long list of different wine because when you're gonna liquidate, when you're gonna uh, be in the position of selling out, if you have only one case, the wine merchant, the restaurant or the collector, it's gonna be like almost, I'll do you a favor, I'll just buy the case off of you and I cherry pick. If you have more than one, they cannot see you as supplier. So in that sense, if you have three cases, you can decide to liquidate two, keep one for yourself or liquidate in a second stage. So it's always better to kind of condense a bit your selection and don't spread it, uh, spread it too much. Same thing as Warren Buffett does in Berkshire Hathaway where, uh, where he invests, when he's invested. He buys stock from Coca-Cola, he buys stock from Microsoft, but he has a relevant amount of it. So if the stock or if this particular wine that we have in our portfolio perform extremely well, the growth, the percentage that uh, is going to show the increase is going to be relevant on the overall of the portfolio. Otherwise, if we have one case, even if it does the 70-80% that we saw with Sasikaya, in the overall portfolio, it's just a minor percentage. 
So what is happening when we increase pretty much? When we increase, what is happening is it become more complex and it become a bit of an idea of reaching out on the longer term as well. So a 10,000 10, pound portfolio, it can be something from one to three year, perhaps where you test the market, where you understand how it goes. Well, when you have something around 25, you can even spread it around a bit, uh, a bit more and you can take advantage and utilize uh, some of the funds for maybe buying a bottle that is more expensive. Let's think about the Romane Conti of the situation, for instance, or I mean, Richborg or the HSO without touching the Romane Conti, Romane Conti, which is uh, more than 10,000 uh, 10, pounds a bottle, which will take too much of the share of your portfolio and will tie up too much of your, uh, of your capital in only one particular bottle or in one case in certain, in certain uh, cases. So in that, always take the flexibility, always take the position of I can, uh, I can move around, I can decide what to do. Portfolio for 50,000, we have even more. We are even more in a position where we can utilize this iconic wine that have an amazing performance. And we are not gonna tie up too much, basically, our capital on, the, on this particular bottle. So always the flexibility is quite important. And again, we can touch on the longer term. Always be flexible with the investment strategy. I mean, it makes sense till a certain point to invest on a bottle that has a 10 years strategy for the investment. But maybe it's better to invest with something that you can flip, you can turn around in one to three, one to five years, and then do the cycle again. Again, to conclude, 50,000 plus is something that is, uh, that is literally tailor-made and it's done for... Uh, um, for whatever amount you decide. It can be extremely flexible. You can add pretty much whatever you want. Very important, uh, uh, very important kind of portfolio. Always consider is, one is an alternative asset. I'll give you a kind of suggestion. Consider it as something that you put a percentage of your money, not all of them. Leona, I think we are at uh, question and answer. I didn't want to keep it too long. I hope it was uh, kind of uh, quite clear in the explanation. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, would you like to stop sharing so we can see, uh, yeah, we can then have a Q&A. <laughs> oh, here we are. Okay, and so, so thank you so much. I think that's really, really clear. I've received a few questions here. And uh, so I think the two that I sent earlier, um, so yep. what are the impact of COVID-19 on the fine wine investment market? I think a uh, very contemporary question in this case I mean we've seen uh, and uh, <clears throat> I'll be honest I was personally quite concerned on, on the on the situation when we see the lockdown I thought about it would be difficult to liquidate the wine maybe there are requests to stop and uh, the consumption stop and the market kind of uh, crash massively uh, on the contrary we have seen quite a stable situation so again uh, I was mentioning before a capital um, capital protection for investor perfect asset the wine has not been affected too much first of all we need to consider that fine wine for investment is a wine that is very long lasting so the coronavirus despite uh, has been a, a very kind of long pandemic but in the overall kind of maturation cycle for a wine it's not been too long so even if a wine stays there it will mature it will be ready for being sell out in the future and nonetheless, I mean, a lot of wine has been absorbed through um, basically e-commerce, online retailer, and there's been quite uh, quite a bit of movement, I, um, I love to say. So in this sense, the market has hold quite well. And uh, I think with a delay of the Bordeaux and Premier as well, which is just is happening now at the moment, um, that created a lot of excitement and we still see a lot of movement in the market. So uh, despite everything, still a very positive, uh, still a very positive situation. A bit slow down, but definitely not, uh, not bad. Okay, another question, quite a big question as well. What are the key changes in the fine wine investment market you've observed over the last uh, decade? And how do you see this developing over the next 10 years? Well, this is kind of a topic that I always touch with my investor because it's very, it's very interesting to see how in the last 20, 15, 10, uh, 20, 15, 10 years as well, 
the wine investment has changed. Before, especially 20 years ago, was very much collection. I mean, my ideal client would have been flamboyant, extremely rich, high net worth, ultra high net worth individual, individual that would have bought a bottle for collection, for consumption, or bottle uh, bought a bottle of wine in restaurant for uh, for drinking, for, for a lifestyle purpose. Nowadays, because of the uh, financial situation, this crazy volatility that we see in uh, any other asset we saw before, uh, I show you the chart with um, which showed the Standard & Poor index, which is one of the most important financial asset index in the world. The massive drop that it did, it was the fastest actually ever recorded for the Standard & Poor. In this case, the incredible volatility made the wine become almost a necessity. We saw that uh, performance are stable, that is uh, under our own control, that is not correlated to any other asset that we pay, that we don't pay in many in many countries capital gain tax. So in uh, um, in this sense, uh, pretty much has been a, um, an incredible position to be in. I think the source of the wine uh, is going to be to. Uh, become even more important in, uh, um, in terms of an investment. So market is going to grow even more. Okay, thank you. And uh, a few more questions come in privately as well. Perfect. And uh, so people are asking about the uh, emerging markets that so we know about uh, France, Italy, being the you know icon iconic uh, fine wine you know countries and regions, are there any emerging countries that you 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 think that we should look at in terms of fine wine market? Well, absolutely. I mean, um, I'm uh, in terms of in terms of my job description, what I do personally, I'm a talent scout. I look for wine that is outside the box. I mean, I found that is uh, very undermining for uh, for for me asking to an investor. Uh, just pay my fee just because I'm selling you some Bordeaux that you can have heard about everywhere. So I look for something else. I've mentioned before the bottle that you have behind you, Senia. Great wine from uh, from Chile, from Alma Viva, Chadwick. They're doing extremely well. California has become such an important market that basically Livex itself has dedicated an, um, an index for, for them. And... Um, I think South America will have a very, very important role in the future with Chile, but I think even other countries, I mean, even countries that we have less heard about. A lot of countries that still we think that are very iconic, very important, I still need, they are still in a young phase in terms of uh, wine investment presence. Italy as well, Spain has so much to offer, so much more. And we are seeing some of wine, uh, some wine from China as well, coming out quite strongly in, uh, in terms of wine investment, different project uh, like uh, what well, wine from Lafitte, Aoyun from LVMH, Silver Heights is doing extremely well in terms of popularity as well. So quite uh, quite exciting moment, but I think it's kind of normal because before it was just Bordeaux. I mean, 20 years ago, we would have been just discussing about Bordeaux. Nowadays, Bordeaux is uh, less than 50% of the market. And last month, Italy was uh, accounting for 30% of the market, which is an incredible and phenomenal thing. So we'll see a lot of country coming in uh, quite uh, quite strongly, and in the in the in the future, as well related to the question before, we'll see a lot of uh, new wine coming in in the wine investment market. That's great, thank you. Uh, so one very specific question: so uh, it's does the average ten percent profit that you mentioned uh, take into consideration all the costs involved, like storage and etc. Well, it's, um, it's difficult to say. Let's say normally that's not including the cost, but the cost can be it can be quite uh, quite reasonable. If you think about it, the fee that they ask you for, the bonded warehouse you're looking at around one pound, one pound fifty per bottle per year, with a minimum, for instance, from uh, some company take a loan city bond, for instance, seventy five pound per year. So. Is quite uh, quite affordable. I will say that cost will um, will include one or two percentage point, but not too much. And in terms of wine, I mean, in terms of that's our own track record, we were above ten percent. So you're almost looking between two eight to twelve. I will say with eight percent, you can be uh, pretty relaxed that the um, costs are already taken out. With ten percent, you might incur in some costs, but they're quite reasonable. Just make sure who you deal with, though. 
Okay, thank you. Uh, I think there's another one I just got. Um, okay, about the border on Prima. So, what's your view on Bordeaux 2019? <laughs> <laughs> Again, very, very contemporary topic. This year has been incredible. I mean, uh, the market has been quite, uh, quite slow because of the coronavirus. So, great idea from the, the Bordeaux to delay the, um, delay the end premiere and they release the wine between 20 to 30% cheaper compared to the previous vintages. So you have an exciting year because 2019 was great, uh, great vintage with many chateaus and very, very good prices. Now there's, uh, there's a bit of a question, I'll be honest with you. I still want to know what is going, uh, what is going on because uh, it's been, this discount has been just for this year um, because uh, uh, basically the market is low and uh, they want to create a bit of excitement or Bordeaux is kind of uh, correcting its prices because we've seen from 2008 uh, till 2012 prices went up pretty pretty crazy uh, because of uh, China as well was buying a lot of wine then they were trying to lower the prices but before the negotiation they didn't want to lower them uh, then the winery didn't want to lower them and then they look like they, this year they took advantage to create a bit of excitement a bit of uh, a uh, great opportunity in the market, uh, releasing the wine extremely cheap. Clever enough, I mean, the Bordeaux, I have to say, they know what they're doing, very tiny quantity. So they release uh, just a very small amount, uh, but they create an amazing excitement in the market. So very intriguing. That's great. I think that's uh, all the questions that we I have received. And uh, yeah, so I've given people some last chance for questions, but uh, I think there's no more. So I think you've covered everything that uh, people can think of. That's great. So thank you, uh, Daniel, so much for your mm -hmm. time. Thank and you thank you everyone for joining today. And this session has been recorded. So everything will be on our wine at YouTube, but I will send a link to everyone. So if you wanted to share uh, to your friends or you want to catch up and then you will have all the information. So once again, thank you, Daniel. And uh, thank you. Have a lovely afternoon, everyone. Bye. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thank you. Bye-bye. Stay safe. Bye. Bye.